And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Uh, good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy hump day. Happy hump day. Looking nautical. Stripes look good on you. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, the ocean, you know, is, uh, uh, it's, it's a theme. the theme of uh, what we're going to be discussing today. Uh, it wasn't intentional. But, no, uh, but it's kind yeah. of lining up, isn't it? Um, yeah. Thematic, if you will. Just to, just to clarify, I'm... I'm uh, in a neutral stance in of this course. issue, just to avoid any controversy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest headlines for us local listeners because there was a lot of concern leading up to it. And as you mentioned yesterday, Adam, the schedule plan was start releasing those uh, treated wastewater, massive amount of it uh, from Fukushima for the next 30 to 40 years. And it seems that tomorrow is a date when that begins. So let's start out with our first keyword of the day. Release date set. So J Japan is set to begin releasing treated radioactive water from the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant starting tomorrow. This comes, of course, despite the ongoing safety concerns, opposition from neighboring countries and fishermen. It is especially polarized here in the political sector. What's the latest, Adam? Yes, yeah, so particularly a kind of sticky issue because when it comes to uh, any sort of radioactive substances, uh, the amount uh, or the time frame is usually... Uh, calculated in decades uh, for these kind of plans rather than uh, a few years. So that's why it has a lingering uh, effect after uh, the release. And so that's why a lot of these concerns are uh, uh, in place at the moment. Uh, but but uh, the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida gave final approval yesterday to begin a plan for the discharge. At the cabinet meeting he attended yesterday, Kashida described the controversial move as an important step in the plant decommissioning and in the Fukushima prefecture's recovery process after the 2011 earthquake and subsequent tsunami, uh, which of course uh, crippled the nuclear power plant. Uh, 1.34 million tons of the water have now been collected and filtered and it's now being stored in about a thousand tanks, but the tanks are near capacity mm. and will likely be full in early 2024. The Japanese government, along with the plant's operator, TEPCO, have said if the water is not removed, there are risks of accidental leaks from the tanks. Uh, they must also uh, make room for the plant's decommissioning as well, hence why they want to push forward the time frame of the release. Now, Kashida has instructed TEPCO to prepare to begin the process of releasing the filtered water off the coast tomorrow, as long as weather and sea conditions um, allow it. Kashida assured that the government has prioritized safety and explained the scientific foundation of the plan. Uh, he pledged continued efforts during the decommissioning and water release uh, which I as mentioned before, can span decades. Mm. He also highlighted ongoing commitment to safeguarding the fishing industry's reputation as well. So the massive amount of a thousand tanks of worth of treated wastewater will be released probably in the next three to four decades. That's the announced plan. Anyway, as for mm. that scientific foundation, we've actually had interviews with a scientist who supports and a scientist who opposes a plan, and they both have grounds. Uh, mm. What stuck with me was a scientist who opposed it saying that the ocean is already so severely damaged, even though those who support right. the release say that the level of tritium is minimal and it wouldn't do further damage. If you're talking about a blank slate, yes, but some oceanographers believe that humans have already damaged ocean to the point that it could have lingering effects that we can't necessarily calculate just yet. Right, exactly. So uh, yeah, if the if we were uh, if uh, the Japanese government were discharging this water into a very clean ocean, right. then um, that would still, of course, cause concern. Of course. Considering there is, you're polluting even more pollute, uh, giving more pollution to already polluted waters. Of course, that sparks even more concerns mm. as well. And so the back and forth continues. The movie is sparking protests from especially environmental groups and fishermen. Um, what are the reactions so far, Adam? Right. Well, Japan's National Fisheries uh, Federation reiterated its opposition to the release uh, during a meeting with Kushida. In fact, they emphasized concerns over seafood reputation from Fukushima uh, and nearby areas. Uh, the meeting preceded uh, Kushida's uh, cabinet meeting. Now, approval from the fishery industry was crucial for the Japanese government. Uh, government. This is something that I mentioned uh, yesterday, and uh, the Japanese government pledged no ocean release without the fishermen's consent, but Tokyo 
of course, is still pushing through with the plan, despite that opposition. Uh, the move has also hurt Kashida's approval rating, with the release plan mostly cited as the reason behind the falling uh, approval rating. Uh, Korean environmental groups uh, say protests following Japan's announcement. They are calling for the withdrawal of the plan. They also criticize the Korean government for not trying to stop the move and instead advocating uh, for the plan. Uh, rival parties are also taking action. The ruling People Power Party has set up a task force that will meet today, in fact, to discuss the government's response. Uh, the opposition Democratic Party will hold a candlelight uh, vigil or rally at 7.30 p.m., tonight in front of the National Assembly to protest the move. Uh, as for neighboring nations, Hong Kong and Macau announced that they are banning products from Fukushima and nine other prefectures in response to Tokyo's announcement. China has stepped up radiation testing on Japanese fisheries products, delaying customs clearance, mm. so basically putting in place um, some very strict uh, import restrictions. And meanwhile, of course, the South Korean government, very aware of public concerns, wants to address this. This is our second keyword of the day. Water safe. So the South Korean government, it sees no scientific or technical problems with Japan's release a plan, according to release the official statement by the IAEA. Can you run us through the government's stance then? Yeah, so an official at the Office for Government Policy Coordination, Park Geun, clarified that Korea neither supports nor opposes the plan. He added that Seoul will request an immediate halt if radioactive uh, material uh, concentration exceeds standard levels and Japan must inform South Korea promptly. Uh, Park also said the government will prioritize people's health and safety and respond transparently and swiftly while striving to minimize harm to fishermen uh, and the fisheries industry. Uh, under the plan, Seoul will extend radiation monitoring beyond territorial waters. The government currently checks about 200 sites within its waters regularly, so it plans to expand that. Uh, the government plans to collaborate with Pacific region countries on water radiation research by 2025. The government also highlighted implementation of dual and triple verification processes, uh, including regular visits by Korean experts to the Fukushima site and a real-time sharing hotline for emergencies. These were kind of requests that President Yoon made mm. uh, during his meeting uh, with Japanese officials. The IAEA will regularly share water discharge information with South Korea and hold video conferences for explanations and questions. In emergencies, a communication system will rapidly share IAEA information with South Korea Japan will post hourly updates on radiation concentration, uh, flow rates and tritium concentration on a dedicated web page that will also be available uh, in Korean. Uh, Japan will also share measurements from the facility before discharge and swiftly report any abnormal figures. Uh, Foreign Minister Park Jin also emphasized that there is a double hotline for communication between regulatory authorities as well as diplomatic channels. He stressed the need for public reassurance and mentioned the extensive consultations and information systems mm. uh, developed to align with the IAEA standards. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Certainly not the end of it, but if all things go as scheduled, as you said, Adam, tomorrow is when Japan starts releasing the treated wastewater from the Fukushima plant. Let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Rising debt. So household debt in Korea has risen again in the second quarter, driven by surge, uh, particularly in mortgages following the rebound in home prices. That was a brief pause. What's the latest? Yeah, so, so certainly uh, more concerning news in regards to what is already uh, bad household debt uh, in South Korea. It's been a years long kind of issue here. Uh, despite over a year of tightening policies, concerns emerged that failure to achieve deleveraging could uh, elevate credit risks, particularly among low-income groups uh, hampering economic growth. Uh, this is something that I, I mentioned before uh, on the segment. A lot of people take out loans for basically using it as a leverage uh, instead of using all of their uh, individual capital. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, those leveraging uh, kind of benefits uh, kind of um, 
deteriorate right uh, when those loans become a bit too extent uh, a bit overwhelmed now the bank of korea reported that household credit balances at the end of the second quarter increased by nine and a half trillion one from the previous quarter uh, reaching 1,862.8 trillion won. Uh, this marks the first increase in household credits in nine months since the third quarter of last year. Uh, low interest government loan programs, as well as other schemes related to real estate, have led to a resurgence uh, in household loans. Of course, a lot of Real estate policies and loan policies under the UN administration have been uh, significantly eased compared to that of the previous Moon Jae-in administration. And that's why that led to a lot of people uh, trying to take out loans to buy new houses. Uh, housing transactions rebounded from 91,000 units in the fourth quarter of last year to 155,000 units in the second quarter. So quite a jump. Mm. Now, real estate collateral loans reached a record high of 1,031.2 trillion won at the end of Q2, increased by about 14 trillion won from the previous quarter. Overall household debts, including real estate collateral loans, uh, increased to 1,748.9 trillion won. Uh, the BOK governor, Yi Chang Yong, emphasized the priority of reducing household debt from 105% of GDP to 90% uh, in the medium term and implementing various measures to prevent uh, further increases. All right, with that, we move on to our fourth keyword of the day. FKI rebrand. So Korea's leading business lobby group, the Federation of Korean Industries, has revamped and rebranded with the appointment of a new chief. So they want to kind of leave behind its disgraced past and start anew, but probably with the same members. Can you tell us more? Yeah, so uh, it's probably the same members and the rejoining of certain members mm. as well that left uh, the FKI uh, when that whole controversy erupted around it. Uh, uh, amid the uh, Park Geun-hye administration, or that you know um, corruption scandal, mm. uh, that the FKI was also involved or. Uh, accused to be or suspected to be involved in as well. Um, now, the FKI appointed Pungsan Group Chairman Liu Jin as its new head at the general meeting on Tuesday. Uh, it pledged to transform itself into a global think tank uh, rather uh, than uh, a lobbying role, so kind of distancing itself as a kind of business lobby group, uh, which it was largely criticised for in the past. Hence why it was embroiled in that corruption scandal in the PAC administration. Uh, as part of this effort, the FKI decided to merge with the group's affiliated think tank, the Korea Economic Research Institute, or CARI for short. Uh, its Korean name has changed back to its uh, founding name, interestingly, from 1961, which is Han Gyeong Hyuk, which mm. uh, roughly translates to the Association of Korean Businessmen. Uh, its English name will remain the same, though, so still FKI. Uh, its newly set up five-member ethics committee will monitor any inappropriate links with uh, political circles. The FKI also established what it's called the Charter of Ethics to ensure the organization's activities are ethical mm. and transparent. Uh, you has vowed to remedy missteps and eliminate erroneous practices and continue to serve as a driving force behind the Korean economy. He also emphasized that uh, his networks in the US and Japan will create new channels of communication and opportunities for the uh, FKI member companies. All right, new branding uh, and a new ethics board, as you said. Looking forward to what's in the works. Let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Civil defense drill. So civil defense drills involving the general public will be conducted nationwide today for the first time in six years. Local listeners, I consider this a reminder. What should we know? Yeah, so uh, the training will take place from 2 p.m. for 20 minutes. So if you hear a kind of an air raid siren uh, ring at 2 p.m., do not be alarmed. It is all part of the drills. Uh, so uh, do take note of uh, what I'm about to say now. Uh, it will require... Uh, most people to evacuate to designated shelters or underground safe spaces. The country has identified 17,000 such uh, shelters with their locations available on widely used apps such as uh, Kakao, Naver and T-Map. Uh, during the drill, drivers must pull over to the side of roads and follow radio instructions. Subway station exits will be closed with all passengers required to stay underground uh, if you are already there. Uh, several roads in Seoul and other major cities will be shut down for the exercise as well. Citizens must remain in shelters for 15 minutes with an all clear given at 2.20 p.m. Uh, real time updates about the procedure will be relayed to the public through emergency phone alerts, radio and TV. 
Essential services, including hospitals, airlines, railways, subways and commercial sea traffic will remain unaffected by the drill. Areas recently designated as disaster zones due to the recent heavy rain uh, will also be exempt from participating because recovery efforts are still ongoing mm. uh, in those areas. Uh, foreign residents in Seoul are encouraged uh, to participate. It's mostly aimed at the Korean residents here, but of course foreign residents are still residents in Korea. So um, there are, will be uh, some English languages uh, uh, services and instructions available. Uh, so foreign residents uh, are also, as I said, encouraged to participate. All right. So that civil defense drill taking place at 2 p.m. today for roughly 20 minutes. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's coverage. Have a safe one. We'll see you tomorrow. You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.